Well, earlier this month, Hong Kong health officials uh, reported on three additional cases of human infection of rat hepatitis E virus. Um, it was three elderly men, uh, two of them, all with underlying illnesses. Uh, two of them remained in stable condition and never required hospitalization. However, a third one uh, was hospitalized and eventually did pass away earlier this month. Uh, the blood samples of the three patients were tested positive for rat hepatitis E virus upon laboratory testing. Now, when we first heard of this was last fall, around September, um, there was a study that was coming out from Hong Kong University. And uh, this is what they say on their website. Rat hepatitis E virus was first discovered in 2010 and circulates in house rats and sewer rats. It is very distantly related to human hepatitis E virus variants. Human infection by rat hepatitis E virus has never been documented previously. So the Hong Kong University discovery was the first time that rat hepatitis E virus could affect humans. And this is how they found it. Uh, while investigating the impact of hepatitis E infection among immunocompromised transplant recipients in Hong Kong, the researchers identified a 56-year-old man who was taking immunosuppressive drugs after deceased donor liver transplantation. He presented with persistently abnormal liver function tests indicating dysfunction of the liver graft. Rat hepatitis E virus was identified in several of his clinical samples, including stool, blood, and liver tissue. Then about two months later, and only about two miles away, a second case was reported in Hong Kong in a 70-year-old Hong Kong woman. So going back to the three cases that were reported earlier this month, um, uh, Hong Kong food and health and safety officials uh, made the following statement as far as the investigation and what they're going to do. And according to Professor Sophia Chan, she stated, we are very concerned about the situation. Epidemiological investigations by the Center for Health Protection are underway. Uh, we have been adopting a multi-pronged strategy, including improving environmental hygiene, rodent disinfestation, and enforcement actions to combat the rodent problem. At the meeting, we have formulated a corresponding strategy to conduct the cleansing and anti-rodent work in all 18 districts of Hong Kong as soon as possible. In the meantime, members of the public should stay vigilant as rodents can spread a variety of infectious diseases, right? There's also leptospirosis and many others. Uh, to effectively improve environmental hygiene, people should start from cleaning. They should maintain good personal food and household environmental hygiene, uh, she closed out with. Well, after the second case uh, was reported in Hong Kong last fall, uh, we saw that there were some studies out of China that noted that about 1% of rats carry hepatitis E virus, um, according to various studies in neighboring cities, um, according to a Hong Kong University professor. And citing previous studies in Shenzhen and other parts of Guangdong province, uh, the Hong Kong professor said that about one out of every 100 rats carried the hepatitis E virus at any one time. He goes on to say, it is reasonable to assume that the situation in Hong Kong is similar. Um, though at this point, they don't know what the prevalence is right now among the local rats. And it's not just Hong Kong. Um, earlier this year, I think it was January or February, uh, there was a study that came out, it was in January, um, by Canadian researchers that identified an individual who was actually uh, an immunocompetent patient, which is the first time we've seen that in a Canadian national. And to get a little bit more detail on that, 
Um, in this report from the South China Morning Post, the Canadian patient who was otherwise healthy was found to be carrying a strain of the hepatitis E virus that was genetically distinct from that discovered in the first Hong Kong patient. And it goes on to say, the case shows that even if you are healthy with no immunosuppression, you can still be very sick after a rat hepatitis E infection. Um, uh, this Hong Kong University professor says he was very surprised to see the findings of this latest report. My conclusion based on the previous two cases in Hong Kong was this infection was more likely affected people with weak immune systems. But this report showed that a normal patient who did not have a weak immunity could also be infected. And of course, the details are found in the Journal of Infectious Diseases, which I showed you earlier. And the man was a 49-year-old uh, person. He was admitted to a hospital in Halifax, Canada in April 2017 for severe acute hepatitis. And he was later found to have rat hepatitis E virus. Well, they said it was a distinct, distinct strain from the Hong Kong strain. What we do know about his travel is before the condition arose, he had been based at UN facilities in Gabon and the Democratic Republic of the Congo between January and late March 2017. So he was in Africa. Um, now, the patient said he did not have any contact with the rats, rat droppings, or live animals during his stay. And let me just close out... Um, talking about, give me some facts about hepatitis E, the human kind, right? Uh, a reason, not very common here in the United States. Um, we, we do see some cases in Europe and in, in blood donations, um, but it is a very common infection worldwide. And this is from the World Health Organization. They say hepatitis E is a liver disease caused by infection with a virus known as hepatitis E virus. Every year there are an estimated 20 million Hepatitis E virus infections worldwide, leading to an estimated 3.3 million symptomatic cases of hepatitis E. Who estimates that hepatitis E caused approximately 44,000 fatalities in 2015? The virus is transmitted via the fecal-oral route, principally via contaminated water. Um, hepatitis E is found worldwide, but the prevalence is highest in East and South Asia. And there is a vaccine for hepatitis E that was developed in China, but it, at this point it's not um, available anywhere else. All right. Well, again, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment below, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to check us out at the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, the podcast, Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify. And the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area on AM 1380 The Biz or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook at Infectious Disease News and Twitter at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright The Global Dispatch Incorporated 2019.